and in business, the Nigerian economic space for 2020 comes with a lot of expectations with recent moves by the federal government to ensure there is more synergy between the public and private sector. The government also targets ensuring that the business environment is more friendly in order to attract foreign investors. However, indicators like the AFCFTA, border closure, trade war, crude oil prices, the recent financial bill approval, amongst others, which shaped the Nigerian economy in 2020. Live in the studio with me is Wale Olusi. He's an economist at the United Capital. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me, Irene. All right, this year seems to be a very interesting year. What are your expectations within the Nigerian economic space for 2020? Okay, I mean, again, thank you for having me, and um, I think it's also okay to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year, it's our first time. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, just like you listed out some of those indica indicators, we think that, you know, most of these um, policy pronouncements that the government have made late in 2019, you know, together with some of the events in the global economy, those are the issues that will um, shape how the Nigerian economy will uh, play out in 2020. And um, one very huge part of it that, you know, we didn't mention is the effort of the central bank at mm -hmm. driving, you know, credit to the private sector, which has resulted in a very low interest rate environment. Banks are going to be looking at how to increase loan in a way that you will stimulate the economy and, of course, the productive base of the economy. On the other side of the uh, policy is the fiscal policy, you know, issues around the border. The finance bill that was recently signed by the president, um, the fact that the budget for the first time in a long time was passed and um, signed into law early so that we'll have a, a January to December um, um, fiscal cycle. You know, these are the issues that will not only, you know, shape the way the economy runs, but will also, in a way, give the economy a little push uh, compared to what we've had in the last um, couple of years. Our only concern is that because of, you know, these policies, they need a little bit of coordination, like a broad policy framework so that all of these various government agencies can work in a sync. You know, those are our concerns. But on a whole, we think they will help the economy to grow slightly faster than, you know, the pace at which we were moving, but we may not be able to jump back to the five, you know, to four percent that we were coming from before 2016. All right, so we know that uh, we would not deny the fact that while the Nigerian government is trying to diversify its economy, the crude oil certainly has a major impact when it comes to our revenue generation Correct. in the country. So how do you see the trade war between uh, U.S. and China, as well as the issue between the U.S. and Iran at this Correct. moment? How do you see that um, affecting us here in Nigeria? Okay, so what Nigeria has done is to benchmark um, our crude oil price at around $55 um, dollar to a barrel. And uh, we are not expecting too much from oil revenue. Oil revenue is... Um, about three trillion or, or thereabouts in the budget. But, you know, whatever is happening to trade, whatever is happening between the tension between US and um, um, Iran, you know, as well as what the OPEC members are doing, they are a huge indicator as to where, you know, we should expect um, oil prices to be. And of course, the impact on the Nigerian budget and of course the currency market because oil remain our largest um, exports. So, what we are saying is that, yes, you will see occasional um, upside um, risk that might want to push up oil price to the 70s and above. But it looks like the broad dynamic in the um, oil market is signaling that, you know, oil price is likely to stay around 65 to 60, that range. Occasionally, because of this tension between U.S. and Iran, it will spike, like we saw it earlier in the month. Mm -hmm. But because the shale oil producers are like the largest, um, 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 they own the largest market share in the oil market now, and the largest oil consumers don't want oil prices too high, this may keep oil prices, you know, at a reasonable level of 60 to 65. Again, a factor that will not push it below that is the fact that OPEC, led by Saudi Arabia, also decided to take a cut, about 400 million um, barrel you know, is going to go out of the market 
starting from this January because Saudi Aramco is also listed now and they want yes. that price to cash in out at that exactly to stay mm -hmm. reasonably stable. So these are issues that will keep oil prices, you know, at the stable. current band going forward. And you know, so long as it's above 55, I think Nigeria uh, yes, revenue if. is okay. It is when it's now around 40 that we should be worried. All right, so another very important conversation I think we should have is on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Yes. We know that's supposed to um, come into implementation by July of this yes. of this year. We know about the border closure, yeah. one. And uh, regional development for the second half of 2019 showed that most of African countries are really <laughs> not, not ready, ready <laughs> for this kind of intra-regional trade. How do you see that affecting the Nigerian market? Okay, so, I mean, what we've seen since this whole border closure issue to start from there is the, you know, fact that, yes, there's a spike in food prices across the country because clearly there's a shortage of supply. But there are other so many positive sides around security, around the illicit flow of drugs and so on. And in a long time, the last December recorded a very peaceful December in Nigeria. We think these are very strong points that may force the Nigerian government to keep this border closure in place for a while. Because, I mean, if it's positive for the broader economy, then they want to keep it in place. But it can't be um, locked forever. Now, driving that back to the AFCTA, you know, apart from Nigeria, we also talk in terms of what is happening in South Africa, these are xenophobic attacks. Okay. These are issues that, you know, these countries want to look at critically before opening up their border for a free trade across the region. Now, because these are soft issues that are not yet completely addressed, we think they might be a little drag to the kind of success that the AFCTA is looking at because these countries must be willing. And apart from the largest countries, the smaller countries like Benin Republic and Togo and all these tiny, tiny countries, they also must be willing to you know, keep to their own end of the bargain because, for example, we have an ECOWAS, ECOWAS protocol you know, that specify how free trade within the ECOWAS region should play out. But many of these small countries have not, you know, abide by this rule and that's why Nigeria is kicking back so you know apart from you know the political issues between these countries there's also infrastructure what about trade in terms of I want to move goods from Nigeria to probably Togo or this there's still no you know free transportation I mean smooth transportation the cost of flights is even still very expensive compared to if you want to fly to a Dubai, for example. So these are issues that... that needs to be addressed. So, I mean, we can start, but the success is not going to be now. And finally, before we go, we're out of time. Uh, I just wanted to speak briefly about the ECHO... Um, yeah, the, movement the single currency, the, yes, uh, the CF, where the Francophone African CFA countries, yeah, Frank. dropped the CFA franc, yes, which many consider to be to, a colonial relic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to, you know, ECHO. Yeah, I mean... There's no much there because what we've seen is that uh, the biggest thing that happened is just a change of name. When this is implemented, France will still be in control. Um, um, France, they will still keep, you know, some of these reserves. Well, the reserve probably not be in France again, but the likes of Nigeria will not probably be joining now because France does not want that. Nigeria will not join this single currency if it has to be taken monetary policy dictation from France. That will not happen. Yes, Ghana have ex expressed interest, but we are not sure if they are really, you know, look you at the full, exactly. So we else. think it's a positive development for the, for the French-speaking African countries, but, you know, beyond what they've done, it still looks like the control largely still remain in the hand of their, you know, colonial master. And if that is not out of it, the largest market in the um, region, such as Nigeria, are unlikely to join. If we join, it might be positive for us. But again, we also want to think in terms of what is happening in the e Eurozone, you know, where they launched into a huge debt crisis in the early 2010s because of the um, structural issue be between this country. Because you must have your fiscal policy and your monetary policy to be in sync for a single currency region to work. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. No problem.